we need to discuss something that would help our psychological um, side. And of course, the NSAID protest has um, taken a toll on every one of us, who especially on our um, mental health as well. Now joining us to discuss ways to maintain our mental health as we navigate the nation towards be a better path is Tochi Okafo, the founder of the Excited Living Company. Mm. Hi, Tochi. Hello. Hi, good morning. Thank good morning. you for that. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How has it been? Whew. Um, I speak as, a, as an average Nigerian okay. mm. who lives amongst those that were looted mm. and I feel it's been it's been rough wow. it's been very rough it's been it's been devastating you know and I think two things happened after 2010 2020 well the first thing that happened was the speech that was given to us mm. um, it kind of showed the average Nigerian that we don't matter mm. Mm. that we are not on the minds of our leaders. Yeah. And I think that's where the mental disruption really comes from. When you start to think that you live in a place where your life okay. doesn't, it's not even valuable, then you're thinking, why am I even here? Yeah. You know, so it's that. And we've seen the memes coming from Canada, please come and marry me. Mm -hmm. They might be funny, but that's the feeling of many Nigerians now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's heartbreaking, it is. All right, so, um, you know, a lot of people tend to um, ignore the trauma or the PTSD that comes with uh, protest and um, even when it is peaceful. Yes. The fact that people are on the road, the fact that people are fighting for something, people tend to undermine it. And then I was talking this morning and I realized that something that has been constant, keywords, I underline them as keywords where everybody who has come out to recount after the 2010, 2020 yeah. incident is that I'm in a dark place. I'm mm. traumatized. I'm this. But people are not picking up on those particular words, traumatized, dark place. I'm not myself. Yes. I'm not, you know, certain words. And I think that this is a call for medical practitioners yes. to go out there. Do you think that we should have more people that will do pro bono services, you know, go from, you know, even when you have a patient that comes to you from malaria, ask them about their mental health. health yes. Do you think we should throw that in as a bonus now in our mental health? I think we should have thrown that in like 10 years ago. <laughs> so yes, we should. I think that, um, so two days ago, no, three days ago, I woke up to a swollen face. And I could, I touched my face, it wasn't hurting. So I knew that that face was a sign of, it's like a psychomatic disorder. If you've, I don't know if you know what that is. That is mostly when your mental state affects your physical being. Mm. So there is the need to have mental health conversations because mental health basically affects everything about you. Mm. You lose appetite for food, you lose interest in things that you used to love. And the more that you allow that to fester, it's death, without physical death is mind death, which I think is, is okay. more the worst. So you said let's have more conversations on yes. mental health, yeah. yes. right? So let's do just that. Let's do just that. Um, so. so if you are going to help someone watching to say, um, these are the things you might, might have noticed since the beginning of the protest or yes. the end of the protest, or maybe even after the speech, that should tell you that you should get help, even if it's just a session or just talk to a friend. What yes. are those telltale signs? First of all, in no particular order, a loss of appetite. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen that many people say, I can't even eat. Something that you used to I love and you've lost, yeah, some can't sleep. So a loss of appetite is a sign that you are disconnecting. Okay. Um, a loss for company. You want to be alone. I want to be in my room, put up my lights, be in a dark place. That's another sign that you are disconnecting. Okay. Um, another thing would be your loss for pleasure. The things you used to once love. It could be family, it could be food, it could be playing tennis. I play tennis, I always just set an example. Mm -hmm. So it could be tennis, whatever it is, the loss of the things that you once loved. So liking withdrawal, liking to be alone, that, that, those are signs that you might need to talk to somebody. And it doesn't have to be a professional first, because that now means you have the finances to take care of that. Mm -hmm. So it can be, talk therapy is not, it's like having someone that is knowledgeable, like myself, talk through what you're feeling and to empower you with strategies to cope. And one of the strategies I always recommend to anybody is exercise. Exercise gives you some power. You mm -hmm. take power back when you are able to work out. You take some power back because um, you release endorphins, but those things, you don't see them, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that there's power in when you work out, when you exercise. Any it. form of exercise? Any form of exercise. Okay. Any form of exercise, yes. 
And if you can do it in a group, even better. So yes, that would help you to take some power back. Because at the heart of mental health and mental illness is the loss of power. Mm. Right, is you so thinking, I have no control, and how do you get some control back? All right, so I'd like to bring this back to social media because we know this yes. is a social media age where it a lot is. of people tend to air their problems on social media. You know, they say a problem shared is half solved. Yes. But you will now go there and share your problem and somebody will say, look <laughs> at you, you that. Yes. And then that could even affect you even yes. more. But you are actually being genuine about you. So what would be your advice to people that run to social media to share their problems? I don't think, I think a problem shared with the right people is half solved. Mm. So social media is, is like a whole, is a world that we, you, that with no faces. It's just text and mm. pictures, right? So I think that if you want to share, do find the right person. A, yeah, a friend, a family member, someone you can talk to. But again, one of the challenges with our culture is that we don't embrace vulnerability. Mm. If someone comes to you, now, a man, let's use a man because mm -hmm. that's how we... Mm you know, it's segments, yes, system. comes out, I'm going through a lot, I'm having, I can't sleep, it's like, man up, Joe, what's the problem? You know, those things make people unable to vent. So we should also learn so to I say would, the right things. Yeah, so I always, when I do my lessons, I say, I talk about mental health in two folds. First, your responsibility for your mental health, and then yours for other people as well. You know, the reason why I even brought up the social media, because I saw a man who narrated how um, his siren went off. He has an alarm system in his house and yes. his siren went off and he was so scared thinking the looters are uh, on the, the street. Gates, yes. And then someone said, we, we are doing vigilante <laughs> <laughs> shift mm. over here. You are mm. talking about alarm system. That please problem. But we all deal with this But you also need to know that there is a disparity of class yeah. when it comes there to social is. media. Yeah. So there is. your perspective is never the other man's exactly. perspective. So you know, um, I, that's what I really want to get. Now. But I think that even if we don't all have the same experiences, mm -hmm. if we all have the same knowledge about what mental health is, then we then feel responsible for ourselves and for others. Mm -hmm. In that case, now that person saying, oh, we're doing vigilante, you know, that's where we need to learn to be different. To be empathetic doesn't mean I have to be in the same position. Because yeah. mm. the guy was genuinely so, afraid. Yeah. There was, you know, looters in the days before. So he has every right to be afraid, even if he's a rich man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have a problem. We, we, in our society, because again of the disparity between the poor and the rich, it's almost like the rich cannot cry. But that's also, that's, that's another reason why we should talk to ourselves collectively as a people because everybody is dealing with something. Still staying on social media, yes. we want to touch on media consumption now. What yes. would you advise people to do? I mean, the, the information is just at your fingertips yes. right now. How would you advise them to, to consume media? Let me not start asking the question myself. I think, <laughs> I think consume media intermittently. There are a lot of social media handles that inspire. Mm -hmm. So after 2010, 2020, you know, I was really distraught at, because I was part of the peaceful protest. I'm all for a new Nigeria. I, it's about time. We've been here for too long. So definitely I was, you know, excited about what I was seeing. And then 2010, 20 comes and, you know, I'm devastated. But the truth is that there is still, so I was preaching hope after that, because I feel like Many of us might not leave Nigeria, mm -hmm. so we have mm -hmm. to fix this country because when the world is full, they will start rejecting us. In fact, us. it's safe to say many, many of us will, will not, will not, not leave Nigeria. Exactly. So yeah. I said to preach, let's preach hope, let's preach sanity. So social media, if you, if, not if you can, you should, you know, pick places where when you read their posts, there is inspiration, there is hope being shared because at the end is whatever you focus on that really grows. So if you're focusing on negativity and how broken the system is, that's why I also am on the side of disseminating information that is relevant. Not, we don't have to know all the truths of pain, mm. but we need to know that we can come out of it. So balance it out. Know what is happening in your country. I think it's very important you know that there is mishap, there is injustice, because that keeps you conscious but um, limited so you don't drown and it doesn't also kill you. All right, so um, I've also seen, um, um, I, I want to touch on the healthcare system in Nigeria, especially where, mm. where it has to do with mental health because yes. I've seen a lot of mediocres and char charlatans that just come out and say, um, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm a psychologist, I'm mm -hmm. a this, I'm a that. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes I end up, Okay, I've, I've seen a therapist once, and okay. I think most times I ended up advising my therapist than my therapist did to Are me. You sure that <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, no, I'm serious. Okay. Like, because, no disrespect in I case you're it, watching, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect, but I just feel like I see a lot of mediocrity in that 
skilled. You know, a lot of them do not even have themselves put together. Yes, we're all human. Yes. But how do you think that we can do better in this part of the country? What amount of education needs to go into it for us to be better in Nigeria specifically? I think one of the things that has happened to us as a nation is that we've lost the spirit of excellence. So some of these therapists or any field, they might have the qualification, but then lack the connection. Mm. So I think that aside from going to school and learning, I, did, I'm a, I have a degree in psychology and all of that. But aside from that, I have embodied the need to be empathetic. How do I do that? Through personal learning. I'm taking courses regularly. I'm also interacting with people. I am understanding what's could happen to a person so I can help them the best way possible. Mm -hmm. So yes, our mental health, our healthcare should be revamped. It's part of the NSAS conversation. It should is, be reformed. If we're reformed, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a, it should be reformed because we need to have professionals. And that one of the challenges we have is that once someone says, I have this qualification, they, most people stop personal learning. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me put you in the spot now. If you are placed in a committee for the reformation of the police yes. um, system, what are the first three things you would do for the police system? Curriculum. So I think one of the biggest things is the onboarding system. I would like to know what is being told to a policeman. So I fill the form, I apply for the job, I go to the office, I get the interview, and I, I'm saying, okay, I'm selected. What happens from that selection to when they hit the streets? Uh, so we have to review the onboarding of the police. Okay. We have to review the curriculum uh, and then the continuous training. Uh, Those are the three things. I actually have a document I prepared for oh, maybe like years ago because I've always wanted to work with the police. I have experienced some police um, harassment, yeah. yes, mm. and, and I know that it's something that we need to talk about. So, yes, I have written it before. I talk about it a lot, but maybe it's time I'm to I'm sure actually... you're willing to share as well. Okay. I'm very willing. Okay. Tea time, tea time it, as a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> taking it back to what you said earlier when we started, you said you are an average person yes. who resides amongst those that were looted. Absolutely. Mm. So this is your line of profession, getting people to understand their mental wellness yes. and how to mm. live a better life. Yes. How has that affected your business? Because you're in the midst of those people. Do, do they understand, um, aside looking for finances to revamp their business and, and build everything that um, they've lost, do they understand that they need that mental health um, services right now? Unfortunately, many people don't understand that they need mm. mental health services. And because the way mental health is delivered, conversationally, most people don't see the value of what happens. Because most things that happen are happening in your subconscious or they're intangible things. So because it's not, you know, when we do, just like when I say I'm a wellness consultant, I do wellness consulting, People don't understand it like they understand business because business transforms to money, money. but wellness transforms to life mm. because the more that you have control over your mind, over your physical health, over your body, the more powerful you are. And that's, the, that's where money can come from. So I teach mental health because I feel like we, we, we in, I think it's against our culture. We're not very particular about intangible things. The things that we cannot see. Right. We don't think right. that is valuable. Sure. And mm -hmm. mental health conversations are intangible. I, I, like, I like the fact you touched on that because um, Nigeria alone will affect your mental health. It will. <laughs> let's, Absolutely. Let, let's face yes. it. So what are some of the things that you think are daily activities for every Nigerian yes. that, eat, that is affecting our mental health in this part of this country? That is affected that can help our mental health. Uh, Okay, let's, 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 start, yeah, affecting. let's start with affecting mm -hmm. then. Oh, everyday oh. stress. So, for instance, when I work with organizations, they want to recruit, I always tell them, ensure that the staff lives a certain distance, distance from Proximity. your place of work. Proximity is very key. Mm -hmm. One of the things that hurts us is our traffic experiences. Sure. You know, I don't know how someone can think they're productive with four or five hours sitting down in one spot. Mm. You are, there's death happening at a slow pace, but mm. there is death happening. Because mm. see, the sedentary lifestyle, obviously, is not good for anyone. Mm. So yes, we deal with traffic. We deal with police brutality. We deal with last month officials ramaging through your car. Sometimes you're asking, what did I do? You don't even know what you have done. So we're dealing with a lot of injustice mm. as, a tip, as an average Nigerian. So those are things and that... And we don't feed right as well. We don't feed right. So what are we things that we can do to, to have a better life? The first thing is your nutrition. I was going to say that as well. Yeah. You know, um, we have an abundance of healthy food in Nigeria, but our diet is not healthy. Mm. So there's a difference between your food and your diet. Mm. Food is what we have. That is what we eat. 
So I think I want to help Nigerians to eat healthier. That's one of the biggest things I do. I talk about whole foods a lot. So we have to eat healthier. Exercise is supposed to be a part of your life, a minimum of four times a day. Go for a walk. Four times a week. Four times a week. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's how excited I get to exercise. No. Four times a week is the minimum for anybody you have to work out. Also, make out time for sports, yeah. fun activities that challenge your, your intellectual capacity. Yeah. I like to read as well. So I think reading helps. Reading takes you to a place where it, it, it takes your mind to a place where your body cannot take you. But once your mind is there, eventually your body will get there. So I think reading eating well, exercising, hanging out with family, and just keeping hope alive is very, mm. very If I like that she said fun, I don't know if you've seen this video of the place where adults go to jump on something that looks like bouncing. Yeah, yes, they yeah. have yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, we, we should do that. that. We should do that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we yes. should learn to have fun. It's not just the one bear. It's mm. not, exactly. Yeah. And <laughs> they think the fun, fun is, is the one bear. Well. Do you not, want to touch yeah. on that? Yes, fun is not... So there's positive fun and there's negative fun. Mm. There's fun that you engage in and it leads you to a bad state. Alcohol consumption in high levels. I, I do a bit of wine, but I mean, you know when you're we going... We all do we, the yeah. wine. We won't judge you. <laughs> you know yeah. when you're going above. So yeah. substance abuse as well is never a substitute for, for fun. You know, rather, you know, hang out with your friends. Rather, go for a run. I can't stress the impact of exercise. It's a medicine. When you go for a run and come back home, it is a medicine. Sure. I know. During yeah, the you curfew, know, you I mentioned know. that. No, that during the curfew, I, I, okay. I did a lot of work in, around my oh, estate. Good. And then I, I felt so good. Like, oh, yeah, wow. I'm even still feeling good. Oh, yeah. Good. Yes. So it doesn't mean you have to be in a gym. Yeah. You, just, you can just around. do it around, around have you. have fun. Even in your home, I have home workouts yeah. uh, for, you know, I do Instagram lives for exercises. You can work out in your home. You don't have to leave your house to be fit. Thank yeah. you, you very to much, Tochi, for having this. Thank you for Very insightful. Enlightening conversation. Thank you so I hope, much. I'm sure our viewers have learned something. Thank you. Thank you for watching and do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or just tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. You can also send your opinions via WhatsApp to 090 Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa.